All right, welcome back to uh, Theory and Application of Robotics 2. All right, so if you're seeing this uh, pre-recorded video again, I'm probably still in the hospital, right? Uh, but uh, let's uh, go into some of the more applied topic about uh, robotics, okay? Something that we can look forward to. Okay, so now that we have actually covered all the uh, essential fundamentals from dynamics and control, okay, we are actually able to relate it better in actual robot application. So when we put a scope around, we see that uh, combining mechanics control, and later on, we're gonna see perception to close out the loop so that it can interact with the environment. So previously uh, in fundamentals, where you look at the mechanics, you are understanding the plant itself. How do you actually model the plant? So uh, being able to represent it mathematically so that you can analyze and come out with a solution. And then uh, in our first uh, or rather two days back, uh, we actually look at control system. How do we actually uh, achieve the target that we want? So remember robot is uh, nothing but a machine designed to achieve certain tasks while interacting with the environment. So you kind of need to understand uh, the task as well and how you go about achieving it while interacting with the environment. So you need perception, okay? So this is what we're gonna look at in this uh, lecture as well, okay? So being able to uh, uh, understand uh, images of the surrounding, allow the robot to able to react to the environment. <clears throat> so let's recall our robot kinematics. Uh, we actually went through uh, kinematics, static body and dynamics. We're gonna have a very quick uh, uh, run through of it. Okay, of course, uh, it doesn't do justice for me to just uh, spend a few minutes on this topic. Okay, but I'm just going to uh, relate to what are the relevant uh, aspect uh, to the context of robotics. Okay, so in this case, we are interested in relating the force and motion. So what are the forces that causes this, uh, that cause this motion? All right, so we need to work out the dynamic equation. All right, uh, so uh, there are some examples. Uh, to keep you motivated, okay, when you uh, design a robot like this, a, a quadpedal robot, okay, the MIT cheetah, okay, it's actually involving a lot of interaction with the environment, and some of these dynamics, uh, dynamics of the system is actually very complicated, okay, so uh, modeling itself may not actually be uh, totally uh, effective, we also need to have uh, robust control, uh, adaptive control to be able to uh, make sure that the robot is uh, doing the right task uh, to achieve the right goal or the right outcome. All right. So these are some of the examples. I'm sure you have seen this uh, for Boston Dynamic. It actually went, uh, or oh, it came a long way, okay, starting from a very prototypical uh, robot that couldn't uh, even perform very simple tasks, okay? But today the robot can actually do superhuman tasks, okay, flipping, and this is actually uh, outdoing a lot of uh, human expert, okay, the acrobatic uh, capability, right? So till now, uh, we have already covered mechanics. So we are able to uh, model or represent the mechanics, okay? Essentially the plan when we talk about it in the control context. And we actually roughly know what kind of control scheme that we can design to achieve the uh, outcome that we want. Okay, so the next thing, of course, if we move up the level of intelligence, okay, we actually want it to be able to perceive the environment. So sensing or rather perception is actually a higher level of sensing. So when you sense, you get information, but you're not necess you don't necessarily uh, get, uh, convert them into high level information that can do decision making. Okay, so that comes uh, with perception. And perception is actually something that will update your planning. So the robot can actually uh, work out plan, okay? That uh, will uh, reach certain goal, okay? So these are like trajectory references. Come out with a trajectory. So how do you achieve certain goal uh, with a certain plan? And then you have this trajectory reference sent into your controller so that the controller know what kind of input you to send into your plan, okay? That is the mechanics of our robot. And then uh, through this uh, interaction with the kinematics and dynamics, okay, it will uh, result in certain state, okay? So that state could be sensed or perceived and feedback into the control and planning uh, 
grow. All right. So of course, anything beyond there, are of course, more sophisticated uh, level of connection when you do decision making reasoning, and that is actually not within the scope of this uh, lecture. All right. So this is what uh, I've been mentioning. Control system tell you the kind of input that you need to send into the robot. Okay, your robot is something that you already model. Remember your kinematics analysis. You are able to represent this robot, and then dynamic able to uh, use a dynamic equation to uh, describe the uh, robotic system, and then the control can actually come out with an input that will uh, reach the desired outcome. Okay, so we're going to look at uh, joint control. So assuming that uh, each of this we are controlling the robot by uh, using a motor attached to one of the joint. Okay, so our control problem now simplify to controlling this joint. Okay, so remember earlier on when we do forward kinematics, uh, we have uh, we are representing the uh, this uh, link i with respect to uh, i minus one using the transformation matrix i minus one ti. Okay, so uh, with that. Uh, you kind of want to have some form of input that you can uh, change this uh, host, right? So you need uh, joint control. Okay, so of course in real life you can expand it to uh, multiple uh, joints. Okay, not just a single joint, but we start off with creating a control scheme for only a single joint. All right. So eventually we might be interested in what we call uh, MIMO system. Okay, multi input, multi output control system. But in this case, we're going to simplify the uh, control problem into a single independent joint control. Okay, so the planning system, okay, is when we are sending in the command uh, to the control system. So, strictly speaking, planning is to achieve certain goal. The, the step that you will take, or designing the procedure that uh, you will go about achieving certain goal. So you will have certain goal. Okay, so you come out with a trajectory. So you want to move. Uh, something from point A to point B while uh, avoiding certain obstacles. So you need a trajectory, okay? And that is going to be sent to your control system so that the controller will know what kind of input uh, for the actuator to affect your robot uh, robotic system so that it will uh, achieve the desired state. Okay, so there are a lot of methods here. Okay, I will encourage you to uh, look at uh, John Scrap's uh, textbook on some of these uh, function in trajectory generation. Uh, but uh, due to time constraint and for a uh, practical reason, uh, we are not going to go into detail for all these uh, various function. Okay, so, but uh, they are actually quite standard once you uh, know how uh, different ways of uh, generating your trajectory, uh, it is not uh, too difficult. Okay. So the bigger picture uh, that we want to, the bigger picture that we want to really look at is how uh, we can combine all this to create this uh, the, or design this robotic system that help us uh, achieve certain eventual outcome. Okay, so you will have all these uh, various components. Okay, planning, control, robotic system itself, and the environment that it is working with. Okay, so uh, of course sensors are important sensors and actuator, which we didn't cover too much here. Okay, depending on your interest, you can actually go in depth uh, in looking at this uh, branch of uh, engineering called mechatronics, All right? So uh, let's go on to uh, robot planning first. <clears throat> so like what I mentioned, uh, it's nothing but formulate uh, or rather planning, if you want to formally de define it, it is formulating the set of actions that we need, need to solve a certain problem and to achieve certain goals, right? So deciding on the action to bring a particular initial state to a, a particular desired state, okay? But often you are faced with constraint. So it's not so easy where you can do it in any uh, random manner. Sometimes you are faced with constraint like this, so far moving problem, okay? The piano problem, all these are uh, very common or popular mathematical uh, problem that uh, we have. All right, you have uh, initial and final position, and you need to uh, circumvent some of the obstacles. Okay, avoid the obstacles. <clears throat> so parallel parking uh, is part of the planning. Okay, you can't just shift, translate your car uh, directly into the parking slot. Okay, you need to maneuver it 
in such a way that uh, it fit in uh, parallel uh, into the parking lot. Okay, so this is coming out with certain action, okay, while having the constraint. Okay, so the same thing for robot, you're uh, gonna do that sometime. When you wanna bring cup, say for example, an object from A point A to point B, okay? But at the same time, there are so many ways of doing that. You wanna optimize it, or you want to avoid certain uh, obstacles, uh, you are under certain constraint, okay? Reducing the amount of energy required for each joint. Okay, so there are many different objective functions. Okay, so these are some of the illustration. Okay, what constitute planning, formulating a set of action to solve the problem and achieve goals. Okay, since there could be many uh, possible actions, so this is actually an optimization problem, as we all know. So optimizing under specific constraint. All right, <clears throat> so we see this uh, in a lot of example. Okay, formulating the set of action like what I mentioned early on to solve the problem and achieve goal. Typical uh, problem will involve path planning, okay? Uh, very common in robotics, motion planning, task planning, okay? So you want to determine the routes uh, towards a goal for a vehicle, or you want to determine the joint trajectory for the robot manipulator, okay? So this uh, diagram here illustrate your path okay? path planning. Okay. For the, for the, oh. day, day, day. For the, for the, oh, oh, thank you. Ask me to get ready the ambulance coming. Okay, I'll continue to wrap up this thing, okay? I quickly wrap up. Okay, so this is path planning, okay? And this is actually your motion planning, right? Let me just uh, very quickly annotate this motion planning, okay? And at the same time, sometimes you want to define the task uh, to uh, do in especially the phase of medical intervention, like what you see here. Okay, so this is task planning. Okay, so there are various forms of planning. Okay, so uh, sometimes we ask ourselves, uh, is it necessary to plan there uh, a lot of other ways? Okay, in the context of robotic uh, motion planning, necessarily uh, important. Okay, by definition, robot accomplish tasks by moving. Okay, so these are some of the examples. Okay, so uh, I would like you to think about some of this uh, uh, planning in the context of robotics. There are some example in your lecture slide. Uh, please go through the mental exercise to uh, get yourself familiar with uh, the planning process.